All right, well, welcome everybody to our October meeting. While we will have a uh, kind of a more formal moment to welcome Rachel, our latest and newest commissioner, I just want to say, have everybody say hi to her and we'll introduce you properly in a little bit once we have everybody on the call. And my dogs are about to bark because we have uh, a delivery. So apologies for that. We'll go ahead and just. <laughs> Holly, do you want to give us an update on financials? Sure. And uh, this is my first time doing this. So just if I'm leaving anything out, just holler at me. Uh, so I'm going to just share my screen. Ooh. Okay. Can everybody see that okay? Are we good? Yep. Okay, awesome. Okay. So right now, um, and this is just um, the BAC, this is not counting the BUEA that will uh, has is a separate account that will be funding our grants fall cycle. In addition to this funds, um, we have a total of 65,597 dollars and 31 cents that's split between two accounts uh, the municipal arts counts and the arts commission operating funding account now this is my understanding so the so this money is both the sixty thousand dollars that the city gave to the bac as a one-time recover forward gift that we can use for the fall grant cycle um, that additional money you see in there, I believe, accounts for the 2% upgrade. So every year we get 2% up of the usual 40,000 that we're given for each cycle. So I think that's what that extra overage of over 60,000 is made up of. Does that sound does right? It, <laughs> does anybody have any questions or comments? and can answer Holly's question. I believe I that think, is correct. Yeah, I have that same impression. So that's three <laughs> people who think that is correct. Awesome. Um, but not yeah. being privy to the day to day, yeah. it's hard to. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I can clarify that just with my colleagues to make sure we're all on the same page about what that is. Um, and. Uh, one thing, and I think, again, this will be an internal thing that I work out with my colleagues at the city, is um, when we do begin allocating funds um, after we've chosen recipients for the fall grant cycle, we're going to have to decide, because the BUA 40K funds for grants is in a separate budget, we're just going to have to decide how, like, are we dispersing to entities from those two accounts separately, or is there a way we can, like, combine those two funds so our recipients are getting one check as opposed to two checks. So that is something that we will resolve by the time we announce our recipients in November. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks. Do you have a uh, initial staff report? Anything super pressing? that is kind of big picture of all so encompassing. I think, um, yeah, so really big picture, I think um, right now, and um, I can do this update now or I can wait until we're further down into the agenda where we're really talking about 1% for the arts projects. That's really kind of what's in my face that's related to the BAC right now is just- Okay, then let's go ahead and all the installation projects. Yeah. But yeah, that's really the big thing. And just happy that the BAC fall grant cycle is live. Um, I attended BUEA's monthly um, board meeting earlier today and just plugged it there again so yeah. perfect Great. did everybody have a chance to review the minutes okay i move to approve the minutes second perfect um we'll take a vote nick yes Babette? Yes. Karen? Yes. All right. Uh, Rachel, did you have a chance to review the minutes? 
I did. It, you know, it didn't make a whole lot of sense since it was all new, but I, I did glance over them and I got to see the video as well of your interview um, or your conversation. So, okay, perfect. Yeah, he's joined us now. So, Rachel, do you approve the minutes as you read them? As I read them and understand them? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, moving down the agenda, the very first thing that we need to do is, uh, Mitchell, if you can turn on your video, I would appreciate it. As you all know, I met with Mitchell um, a few weeks back. I shared that conversation with all of you, and he's here today to give us an update on his project and additional steps that he has taken in order to hopefully come bring this project to fruition. Welcome, Mitchell. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> Go ahead and take it. Um, okay, so um, I've I've never done this before, um, I, but uh, just to give you some background on me, um, I'm I'm an artist, um, graphic designer. Uh, my background is in graphic design and fine art, um, but in 2014. I started transitioning away from graphic design. Um, I, although I still do graphic design, I don't really advertise it as much outside my nine to five. Um, outside my nine to five, I do street art. And um, I've had the opportunity to participate in a number of street art festivals, um, most of which were in Lafayette, Indiana, or around the Lafayette area. Um, in in the fall of 2014, I did Small Spaces Lafayette. Um, that was a, a project that a, a friend of mine curated. And then a couple of years later, he curated Ali Palooza in Lafayette. Um, and then 2018, um, the Tip Canoe Art Federation um, did Wabash Walls. And they brought in uh, this guy named Cameron from San Francisco to curate that project. Um, and and then in 2019, um, he did another project for the Tippecanoe Art Federation in Rensselaer called Ren Art Walk. And um, both Wabash Walls and Ren Art Walk have had multiple iterations um, since their first since their first year. Um, and I've kind of positioned myself to be friends with both of these individuals who have curated these projects. And it's been my longtime dream to kind of step up and curate my own street art festival. And um, since I moved to, to Bedford in, I think, 2015, um, I've had my eye on Bloomington. And we, we spend a lot of time in Bloomington. And I, I just feel like Bloomington is perfectly primed for a street art festival. Um, it's just, you know, just waiting to happen, it seems like. I mean, the, the, the art culture is there. The street art is there. The, the graffiti is there. Um, and, and I think that um, if, we, if we had an initiative for a street art festival, um, we could curate our own neighborhoods in Bloomington and maybe like tackle one neighborhood at a time. And, you know, if it, if it ends up being successful, then we could, you know, try to attempt the same thing on an annual basis. Um, but basically my idea was to invite like top tier artists and then find um, like semi-local, maybe like Indiana or surrounding state local artists as like the second tier. And then the bottom tier would be like Bloomington local artists, just that's it. And then, um, and then like the pay tiers would, you know, uh, reflect that depending on like the, the, the level of talent, the amount of travel, um you know that that kind of thing that needs to be considered um um but but yeah i i don't really know um what to ask for because i i've never been in this position or had this audience before where i've i've had access to um a board like this one um and like with my with my past experience working with the Tip New Art Federation, um, I was either hired on contract to to paint a mural, or I was um, 
or I was recruited by the, the one that was curating the, the project. But, but either way, my, my paychecks were coming from the Typical New Art Federation. So, um, yeah, so I'm just trying to, um, to, to navigate this as I go. Um, so I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Um, and if, if none of you want to work with me, that's perfectly fine. This is a great learning opportunity <laughs> regardless. Um, and I will take this knowledge with me in the future. Um, but as, as far as, um, if I had to put a price on this, I think, I think a legitimate street art festival would, would cost at least, uh, 50k. Um, although I think it can be done for less than that. I, I just think that the, that, that the quality of the festival would, would, would definitely, um, be affected by that um but i can i can be flexible um i, I i've tried to look at this on a sliding scale um you know how how many uh, like top tier artists could be invited you know for like a 50, 50k project or um you know how many locals could be selected for like in a 50k product pr project with like th maybe three top tier artists and uh, maybe three mid-level artists. And then, we, then we could have like five, four or five, like local, just Bloomington local artists. Um, th that was kind of what I had envisioned. Okay. So why don't we do this? I have some questions, but I'd much rather sure. other commissioners go ahead and get started with some of those questions. So okay. anybody want to go first? I would love to hear, Michelle, if you um, have thought further about the locations that you would be interested in Bloomington. I um, recall that being part of the conversation that you had with Bryony about making sure that the festival would, would permeate you know, throughout the city. Yeah. Um, she had told me that, um, that, I forget the name of the organization, but there or um, I, I'm not even the sure what it's called. Alley, is that the one? Um, the, 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 she, she was telling me that there was like a, like a committee that, that was like in charge of, um, the, the different neighborhoods and that they might be a valuable, uh, resource to to point me in the right direction for like what building owners to approach and what business owners to approach um, for a project like this. Um, that way we could get, um, you know, the, the proper permission as well as like kind of bounce ideas off of them. Once artists are uh, being selected, um, we can kind of bounce off the, the building owner with like maybe like their Instagram account or something and be like, this is the type of work that you can expect from this artist. Would you be cool with them painting on your building or would you like to see somebody else maybe and kind of negotiate those things on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nick. Yeah. Hey Mitchell. I like, I have a, I have a couple questions. I mean, you mentioned, um, you know, small spaces and Wabash walls. Um, yeah. Like, like the Wabash walls project in particular. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with the process, but I'm familiar with like the final product, right? The actual festival. Mm -hmm. um, uh, have you, you know, you mentioned that that you sort of function as, you know, participating artist, you know, in things like this. But do you know much about their process? You know, like ha have you talked to other folks who have organize mural festivals to see if there's some sort of, um, I don't know, just sort of some parameters or rules of thumb or, you know, yeah. talk to people yeah. who've already made the mistakes and, and learn some lessons from them, that sort of thing. Yeah. And um, so I talked to my, my friend, Zach Medler from Lafayette, who curated uh, Small Spaces Lafayette and Alley Palooza Lafayette. Those are both hashtags that you can search on Instagram. Uh, those were some of the first uh, mural initiatives that happened in Lafayette. Um, but, but he's a really good friend, friend of mine and I consult with him on a regular basis. Um, and I've been trying to, um, predict any kind of, um, 
like obstacle that I might face uh, preemptively um, just by asking him questions on like a hypothetical basis. Um, but I think th that certain things are just going to be different because it, it's Bloomington and the, the area is different um, and, and the things that are available are, are going to be different. Um, but, but yeah, I have a general idea. I also talked to Cameron who, who curated Wabash Walls, which I thought was a great project, a very successful project, and um, the Ren Art Project, Ren Art Walk Project. He also curates a number of projects all across the country um, in, in different cities, in different states. And, um, and I also consult with him as well. Um, so I'm not worried about um, like running into a problem that, that I won't be able to navigate. Um, I'm, I'm pretty good at thinking quick on my feet. So, um, and, and I feel like that I've had enough experience being on the other side of it um, that, that I know what kind of accommodations um, both experienced and unexperienced artists um, are, are going to, you know, be expecting or, or um, you know, would, would need to facilitate them in in pulling off what you know we're asking them to pull off and you know um what would be a probably about a week time period and th that's that's normally about the the time range that one of these festivals lasts is, is about five to seven days cool um so i i i think i think it, it seems like there's there's three big stages to this right there's um figuring out the budget and the source of funding yep. there's the, the physical locations mm -hmm. and then there's finding the artists um i don't right. want to diminish the last step but i feel like that's that's the step that maybe you and everyone here you know probably has the most experience and expertise with and so maybe focusing on the on the first two points um you know do you have a plan for for how you're going to seek funding. And then I think in, in terms of like the physical locations, I'm curious, um, you know, there are a lot of unactivated spaces in Bloomington, but there are a lot of spaces that already have murals. And so are you looking, mm -hmm. would you be looking primarily for unactivated spaces? Would you be looking to potentially refresh spaces that are already like mural and graffiti spaces? And then I think sort of related to all that, you know, where you're based in Bedford currently and mm -hmm. um, in, you know, I'm, I'm sure you spent a lot of time in Bloomington. Um, have you, do you have any uh, like local colleagues, you know, that you might be able to work with as a, as a collaborator to sort of help with like the local buy-in, you know, as far as reaching out to businesses and organizations and things like that? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I, I have, um, I have a friend, Adam Long, up in Bloomington. He seems to be really active with murals in the Bloomington area. Um, but um, I, my my main focus is 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 the funding because if if I can't if I can't get the funding, then I mean all the planning doesn't really matter because that um, it it really ultimately comes down to the funding. And and once I get once I know that I have that, then I can um, spend more time and consideration on, on the other two steps that follow. Um, but um, uh, what, what were you saying about the, uh, um, about the spaces, the unactivated spaces and the activated spaces? Um, I'm actually open to both. Um, I, I, I have noticed that there are some spaces around Bloomington that, that you know, could be refreshed and, and could use new life. Um, but I, I'm also um, interested in, you know, using this project as like a beautification project um, to beautify spaces that, you know, are kind of decrepit or decaying and, you know, could, could use some, some artwork to liven up the place. Anybody else? So I think you do definitely have a what came first, the chicken or the egg kind of situation here. Yeah. My suggestion would to you would be to first try to identify 
let's say 10 locations where you could potentially have it. The budget for each location in a way is going to be different because of square footage, because right. maybe the business says I'll put up the paint, but like really get a deep understanding on the, co the production cost of 10 murals in town and get approval yeah. from those businesses in order to get it to actually produce them. Mm -hmm. The cost, your artist fees will be on top of that. And those can kind of be worked into your budget further down the line. I think you have to figure out your hardcore costs first. Um, right. As with many other materials right now, paint is scarce. Um, paint is more expensive than it was last year. So there's some sure. issues to be had there. Sure. I think you're looking at a timeline of late spring or early summer. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, about yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would I would think so. Um, probably summer would be preferable. Um, but but yeah, I think that would give me enough time to um, reach out to building owners and um, kind of. Uh, reach out to, to different top tier artists to see if they're even available, uh, if they can squeeze in a festival in this time frame um, with their busy schedules. And um, um, as, as far as paint costs, um, I, I did plan on reaching out to um, uh, Benjamin Moore to see if they would sponsor uh, Sherwin Williams. Um, and um, I also have um, like, a handful of like graffiti oriented like wholesale um paint like warehouse distributor type companies okay. uh, th that i would also reach out to and see if they would sponsor a street art festival because i know that a handful of them have in the past um, okay. um true value hardware local here um mm -hmm. also i know has a grants for some um murals and things like that, that you can apply to. Okay. Now, the other thing kind of semi update that I have for you is that Adam Long, who is behind Artisan Alley, has offered to mentor you and help you put this together. Um, so if you're interested, right. I can make that connection right. and you can start talking to him about what he can offer locally. Um, we have a grant cycle in the spring, as I had mentioned before. Sorry, my, my headphone died. <laughs> there you go. Um, so we have a grant cycle in the spring, as I had mentioned, okay. but you know we cannot give you more than $2,000. So oh, okay. our, our project grants are, have a limit. Um, okay. So we can offer you some guidance, some mentoring, um, and potentially a grant if you apply for it and, it and get awarded. But keep in mind as you're putting all of this together that you are adding to a community. So there needs to be community engagement. It's not just about the artists that you're bringing from the outside. There has to be participation from those neighborhoods. There has to be participation from um, either schools, after school programs, um, senior citizens, it doesn't matter to us what it is, but sure, it, sure. it's not appropriate for just a mural to show up kind of unannounced overnight. There needs to be some kind of activation, some kind of participation from the members right. of the community that you, where you're looking into it. Um, yeah. So the thing that you might've missed is that Adam, who is behind Artisan Alley, has offered to help you and mentor you and kind of be a local liaison for you. So if you are interested, I can make that connection and let you guys kind of roll with it and talk about it and get more information on your own. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm actually already connected to Adam Long, um, so I can... This is Adam can... Nahas. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that would be great. All right. Any other questions, comments, suggestions for Mitchell as he continues to work on this? Um, I, just, 
Hey, Mitchell, thanks for this is awesome. Um, so just so you know, so I'm new to the city myself and just kind okay. of learning the life of the land. Um, and there are a lot of murals and I've definitely been thinking about, you know, how can we uh, like kind of bring the murals together and like right. in some way. So this sounds like this could be a good opportunity to start thinking about that. I think uh, kind of speaking to Brianne's point about thinking about actively engaging with the communities that are here. Um, sure. Is thinking about if you were to do this in summer, just thinking about timeline of what else is going on in the city, um, what other festivals are happening. And I'm wondering, and like, not just for conflicts, but also for thinking how can we overlap if we know people are going to be on the streets in one way, you know, doing arts things. Can sure. we also, like, could this just be another thing that they could be engaged in while they're already sure. out? About? Um, so that's something to think about. Um, I'm also happy to keep in conversations with you, just knowing the city is also thinking about, you know, just using murals as ways to highlight different histories. There are a few um, buildings that um, there are some immediately immediate concerns about how can we make them look pretty while we are demolishing other parts of the site. So I'd be happy sure. to um, also um, stay in touch with you about ideas for where some of these murals could go. So. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, thank you. And then my last suggestion to you, Mitchell, would be to also consider breaking it down into phases where maybe you have this very ambitious plan, but what happens if you spread that out in a three-year uh, schedule where you start experimenting and activating some areas and then the next summer it's a little bit larger and then in three years that's when you have your 50k green, uh, big festival mm -hmm. that would allow that would give you a learning curve not only with finding the locations and the funding and actually getting it produced but it can help you iron out any wrinkles at a much smaller scale yeah since you do not you have the experience of being the artist but not the experience of being the project leader, sure. creator. So there's nothing uh, wrong or, you know, in taking baby steps first. Absolutely. That's... All right, does anybody have anything about that? Yeah, uh, going along with what Brian has said is that if instead of a mural festival, if you look at this as a mural project, and you could set up, um, you could set up a five hundred one three C, and you'd be able to raise money to to do what you needed to do, and you could get. Uh, I think it'd be easier for you to get the kind of participation that you want to do. And uh, to Barney's point, on a, a scaled uh, basis, so it would give you your learning curve but it would also set you up so that you could eventually be the go-to mural place sure do you have any other questions for us mitchell um no i i don't think so um you, you said true value hardware yes was they had they had grants. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna look into that. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing your project with us. Really thank you. appreciate it. And you know where to find me if you have any more questions or if you want to reach out to anybody. And I'll connect you with Adam Nehas in the, on the side. And uh, you're more than welcome to stick around for the entire meeting, or you're more than welcome to bow awesome. out as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving down on the agenda. Now we get to talk about the 1%. So Nick and Holly, take it away. Um, yeah, I mean, Holly, where do you want to start on this? I mean, uh, I, I shared some notes with the public art committee from, uh, from our last meeting where you gave some updates, but do you want to just sort of 
run through the active projects yeah, um, yeah. and I can sort of tack on. Sure, sure. And um, and I actually I have some more updates uh, since our subcommittee meeting. Um, so I'm just going to start again uh, with Switchyard Park. Um, so I think, as you all know, uh, for the most part, uh, the two installations there, Hoosier Line and the North Star are pretty much done. Um, we are currently in contact with the fabricators uh, for two things. So on the Hoosier line, um, some of the bolts were not painted. And um, since we last talked, um, they are like, oh yeah, we should have painted those bolts. So um, they're gonna go paint all of the bolts so they match the colors that the actual rails on the installation are painted. Uh, so that's underway. Um, another thing we discussed with the fabricators was adding a photo cell for uh, the northern for the North Star installation, just so the lights only come on when it's nighttime. And so this is just to save energy, be a little more sustainable and only put the lights on when you can actually see them. Uh, so they are looking into an estimate of how much that will be now. We do have a little money left over in that switchyard 1% budget to um, do that. The last time the subcommittee met, um, I shared that I was struggling to get in touch with Resilience, who was the performance group that had talked about doing something related to the Underground Railroad and the North Star installation as part of a ribbon cutting ceremony. I got in touch with them. They're super awesome. They're also super busy and super booked for the rest of fall. So what they have asked is that they are allowed to push back the timing of their performance until late spring. So kind of like we discussed with the um, Trades Garage installation, we, and I've, I've talked with the city and parks about this and they seem to both be totally fine with this. So the conversation is now, what if we did a small ribbon cutting ceremony, like say mid November before it gets brutally cold outside um, and then bring resilience to switch yard in early spring or late spring to do a more formal performance and a re reactivation of the space. Um, so that's where we are with Switchyard. Any questions about that or anything to add, Nick? Okay. I think that works if that is, if I mean, basically that is kind of our only option unless we wanted to reinvent and refigure what we wanted to do. But I think that right. and it, it I, works now. Yeah, and I think kind of like both honoring the legacy of Sean and but also just the quality of this group's work. I know he was really excited about this project, just understanding the kind of work they do. I think it would be, awesome to involve yeah. them so, so I, my only suggestion would be to like book a day with them yes so that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know so we we can work with towards that date and then they can they have it in their calendar and we're okay. not in this yes. conundrum again floundering exactly awesome okay thank you uh moving on to fourth street fabrication is done i'm very excited um <laughs> It was a long time coming. Um, and uh, so I think, yeah, their, um, their person power um, at their studio, it sounds like just ramped up immensely in the past two weeks. Uh, right now, they are looking at an installation um, in mid-November. Um, we're gonna, I, I think we're gonna have to stay on them about that, um, but um, that is the projection at this point. Um, any questions before I move on to the trades garage installation? Should we kind of take the same approach where we might have a ribbon cutting whenever it is that we can and then create something for the spring? Yeah, I think as long as, well, I'll let everybody, that sounds good to me, but I'll let everybody else turn. Because so. um, otherwise activating that space in the cold, we're going to end up with a 20 minute thing and be done and everybody leaves grumpy. Yeah. Um, whereas <laughs> we could have a lot more fun using the various levels in nice weather. Nick? Well, it could be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing I was going to suggest, and I think this applies to switch art as well, um, mm -hmm. is, you know, real quick, just to think about why we do these ribbon cuttings and, and, and things to begin with. There's like the, you know, city like PR moment, right? There's like, snap some photos, get some people there, send a press release, put it on city socials, whatever, let people, you know, informing the public that it is here and it is finished, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and then, you know, where we usually try to go beyond that is in um, activating the space in community engagement. And so, you know, I feel like if, 
if we just make a point to make sure that the activation community engagement part is really focused on sort of the second event and maybe to maximize that, um, as we look to pin dates, perhaps we could look to align where there might be other activities in and around those spaces. Like, so for example, 4th Street Garage, mm -hmm. maybe we make a point to do um, that sort of follow-up event on like a gallery walk Friday, right? Um, you know, uh, with, uh, with Switchyard, um, this might be good to sort of talk with Parks Department about and get their opinion on, but there's any number of things, whether it's, you know, market type events or, yeah. you know, food truck Fridays or, or things like that. You were talking about Friday earlier today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I I think where, especially if, if if the timing isn't really tied in with like a press release and it is just about maximizing engagement, might as well do it when we already know that there are going to be people there. And right. hopefully we add a little bit to it and we're not just generating from zero. Um, you know, I know that's not... Uh, you know, probably totally a, a revelation, but I just kind of want to say it aloud as we're as we're thinking about dates for next year. Rachel, are you familiar and slightly with these two projects? Very, uh, very slightly. Yeah, I need. Okay, to so I'll make sure that I, I'll I'll send you some files and things so that you're up to date. But don't worry that you're if you're not grasping everything today. It Thank takes, you, it takes yeah. a little while. And you and I are meeting on Friday anyway, so we'll go over our details. That will be helpful. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Fourth Street, no, not Fourth Street Garage. We just talked about that. Trey's Garage. Um, we're, they're like, just hitting that cadence. Uh, they are going to be installing um, the final week of October. So we're in conversation with the parking department to block off towers at alternating locations to get the installations up in each of the towers. And again, um, I think we're talking about the same kind of ribbon cutting ceremony in fall with a little small, perhaps movement performance with windfall and then something a little more main street or a little bigger, including dancers wearing costumes that the artist Esteban has designed um, activating the space again. Um, and we're talking about doing that um, alongside um, another ribbon cutting ceremony for the Trades Gateway sculpture, which we are anticipating being completed in um, February or March of 2022. And that's the final active 1% um, project that we're working on. And that one, um, I believe at this point, Stefan has the renderings and he's in conversation with Ignatian Arts, the fabricators to just kind of finalize things. Um, Ignition Arts intention is to do their portion of the installation in January. And then um, Stefan who currently resides in Germany will be in the States in February of 2022 and will make his way from New York where he's having a residency down to Chicago to do the final embellishments of the installation. And that's when we would have the moment of celebrating both the Trades Gateway um, sculpture with some kind of performance and this have this larger performance at the Trades Garage with the dancers wearing Esteban's super cool looking costumes. So there we go. Any do questions? we have an estimated date for the trades garage fall ribbon cutting no but i will work on that um and okay. i will be in conversation with y'all about that yeah it's just I, I can't really reach out to windfall until sure i get a better sense okay i will get that to you by your meeting on monday Brian. cool sounds good any other one percent updates or additions nick uh Nothing on one percent projects, um, but I, I think the the one thing I did just want to mention um, is uh, I, uh, Holly and I were contacted by um, Sarah Skrobalik. Um, may may or may not be pronouncing that correctly, but she's a, a professor of chemistry with IU, um, and she reached out about wanting to do uh, some sort of basically applying for a, a grant with the National Science Foundation um, and wanting to do some sort of mural project that would tie in with that. Um, her, her area of research is, is nanoscience. Um, and so she wanted to do something related to that. And she was looking for advice on 
you know, how to, how to find an artist, how much it would cost or whatever. Um, uh, I think uh, we, we may want to invite her into a meeting um, like we did in Mitchell today, um, just to get a little bit broader commission feedback. Um, but uh, Holly, um, you may want to follow up with her um, and just sort of sort of talk about like the the timing of things. Um, you know, it, it's interesting with with Mitchell's proposal today. Um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily looking to just like you know kind of combine these things together um but i i think listening to mitchell's proposal it, it would be interesting it, just any hint of like mural conversations you know or mural ideas that we could forget from anyone businesses or someone like sarah um you know we should definitely look for opportunities to maybe help mitchell out you know if there's not like a specific event or moment or an anniversary or something like that they're trying to activate a space around um you know and especially with with where we're getting on the calendar in terms of weather probably stuff isn't going to get installed until next year anyway and so that might help mitchell fill in some gaps um not just for physical spaces but also for you know themes or budget or whatever else um but uh yeah that's just that's just a, a general fyi um holly and i can follow up with sarah a little bit more I think that's all I have. Okay, yeah, I'd be interested in having her present to everybody. Um, so I think maybe December is the next open slot. We've got November covered. Um, Babette? Do, we don't have any kind of active directory of mural artists, of anything. No, that exists under the artisan, um, no, not artisan, um, Arts Alliance. Alliance, Arts Alliance of Greater Bloomington. They have that directory. The old Arts Alliance. Okay. Yes. So that's what, so we would just tell everybody to go there. Yeah, that is a good resource. Okay. And if they cannot find something specific, um, they can also reach out to Artisan Alley. Um, and Adam kind of heads both. So if it gets to him, he will he will help find the right person. He's very, okay. very proactive. I, 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 w I was just wondering the appropriateness of introduce. Not that not that I think Mitchell is any anything, but that if it's appropriate for us to put somebody in contact with any one person, or if we have to be more inclusive. Yeah, well, I think I, it depends I, on. Okay, go ahead, Nick. Well, I was gonna say, I, I think it depends a little bit on the project and the and the process and sort of who it's originating with, you know. Mm -hmm. And and this is where you know, say someone like Sarah reaching out to us, you know, where she needs both location and artist and budget and is not coming from an arts background, you know, that could be an instance where, you know, Holly or Holly and the commission you know, could sort of play matchmaker a little bit as far as like seeking a location. But also if Sarah wanted, you know, we could assist with, um, you know, with a public call for submissions, you know, sort of s similar to what, you know, like, an, or like an RFQ, similar to what we did. Which with, would be great, yeah. Yeah, near, near West Side, you know, and, and so I think, you know, in, I think where that sort of like existing, you know, director of mural artists, where that's really valuable is if there's, you know, like a property owner who wants to do something, they don't necessarily need us for the process or, or possibly even for the budget. They just need to find an artist. Like, you know, that's where, you know, we can just sort of connect them to resources, um, you know, but I think if, if there are more uh, links in the chain that we might need to be, you know, a, a resource for, you know, that's where sometimes that public private partnership and, and like, you know, something along the lines of our public process, you know, sometimes appropriate. Um, so before we move on, Nick, speaking of the West Side, do we have any updates there on uh, the directory, the master plan, all of the other li little loose ends that we have? Yeah, I, I think with um, with Northwest Side, um, it, it's being reviewed by uh, the, the submissions that we have are being reviewed by um, 
the the couple reps from the neighborhood group and um, and members of the commission to raise their hand. I think we gave everyone a deadline of uh, this Friday. Um, I'll I'll check and see where the sheet's at and can give folks a nudge. Um, and then in terms of the the master plan, um, the public art master plan, um, uh, Bryony, that is just the thing that I need to pick back up. That's that's sort of the that that got put on pause for me for a little bit. Um, I think I'm in a good place capacity wise to come back on that. Um, uh, what was the other thing that you asked about? Sorry. Uh, and the directory that we covered on the subcommittee meeting. Yeah, so um, I included this in my notes to the public art committee. I know, Babette, you weren't in that meeting. Um, you know, so if you want to, if you have any questions about the notes in there, feel free. But basically, um, we had a uh, an old, you know, old as in not updated in, you know, six or seven years and incomplete. Uh, like sort of Google Sheet inventory of some public art in town. Um, a lot of it, you know, was focused on uh, like art holdings within like offices and city hall and things like that. But there are some, you know, exterior murals, things like that. But there's a lot that's been added since then. Um, and so what we discussed was uh, a plan for people to basically claim, uh, you know, 10, 15, whatever lines of um, information in that sheet and basically start by verifying what's in there. Um, and then from there, um, we'll start uh, just adding and, and filling in the gaps. And I think we have some you know, resources, both with like a limestone um, post piece that uh, Babette has shared in, in a couple meetings that we've discussed, you know, to reference um, and then I think particularly for uh, projects that have been completed with some commission input, um, whether there's actual like RFQ process or just, you know, we gave some sort of advice um, that is with me to comb through, you know, correspondence with Sean and, um, and, you know, older BAC folders and things like that, just make sure everything's on there. And so I think that if we can get through that sort of first step of, cleaning the data we have and adding the really obvious stuff, you know, that, that we should have pretty easy recall for, um, you know, it's not going to get us all the way there, but it'll, it'll feel like some, some good measurable progress. Um, and then I think we can start filling in the gaps from there. And the ultimate, you know, end point with this, um, I think there, there are two main goals um, just for everyone's benefit. One is, um, to simply have, you know, an accurate inventory so we know what is where. And, uh, and I think particularly for us to be able to see where there are gaps, you know, or sort of like art deserts in, in the community and where there are underserved communities, um, you know, whether that's neighborhoods or particular populations or, you know, uh, commercial versus residential, whatever it is, I think we can look at it through a lot of different lenses. Um, so that can inform our efforts in the future as far as where we want to place art within the community. I think the other big goal is to um, then have this inventory tied to uh, like a Google map overlay um, that can have a comprehensive list of everything, but also um, so we have a good tool to curate some like public art walking tours, you know, sort of things just to just to beef up community engagement and um, and really you know promote what we have you know and so credit to Babette for you know I think getting this conversation started and you know keeping it top of mind um, you know while we've been distracted by some other projects but yeah it feels like we're we're now in a good place where that committee has you know capacity I think to really dig into this and and make some progress over the next couple of months yeah Nick I have a stupid question something I've been thinking hmm. about is that the the city and their accounting somewhere along the line i find it impossible to believe that they don't have some records somewhere you know that they're depreciating stuff or whatever of of projects that are public art i mean it would just do you know what i'm saying it, it, i i i don't know i don't i i can't imagine that it doesn't 
exist within the controller's office. They have to have art that was donated to them. I don't even know what that would be. The only thing that when I when you know we're talking about we have the the postcard project, but there's got to be um, like if you ask the university for an inventory of public art, believe me, they have it because it's extremely valuable. And I can't imagine that the city doesn't have some record somewhere. So the record that exists is the one that we're starting with, but that unfortunately and that's it? there's yes, that is it. Let's take into account that we, you know, even Holly's position hasn't been around that long. And there's a lot of turnover and it's usually relegated to well, no, but interns, I, I which has an even more turnover. No, so, I understand that. I understand that from the BAC point of view, but from from an accounting point of view, from the city, and I guess you'd have to ask whoever the CFO or whatever. But um, you know, all these one the projects, <laughs> the other things they have to. It's a government, a city government. They well, have to have some records. I yeah, think. I, I think. Well, I, I think we have some of those records. I, I think that the document that we have a lot of the, a lot of what's listed there, you know, is it's like framed, you know, uh, painting of a boat or whatever that's in whatever conference room. Like there, there is a lot of that stuff, and so I. You think do have stuff, that, okay? Yes, the, a lot of that is in that sheet um, that okay. that we've had for a while. So that stuff exists. I I, I think that that it's that just not consolidated. Yeah, I, I think that that it's when you get outside of, you know, those sort of like the, the the types of smaller scale pieces that could just as easily be in an office or a museum, right? Like, I, I think the, the, that sort of archive we have, but the stuff that's more in the exterior public space, um, you know, you think about 1% projects, um, I think my guess is the way the city would look at those is not say like the, I don't know, like the guitar hung on the garage or the mural on the garage. They're not necessarily going to look at that as a distinct item that is like categorized with its own value. It's party, probably just part of the structure. It's, it's, it's part of the, the, the features and amenities of the structure. And, and so, you know, the insurance on the garage or whatever is going to is theoretically going to kind of cover all that as well and and not to mention that i think that that part of what we need to get to is there are public and private partnerships you know there are uh lots of murals and things like that on private property that are still in the pub public space um that the, the city you know wouldn't have any financial interest in um you know and then there are things like the you know the traffic boxes and, and stuff like that, that like, that's not, I don't think the city's going to look at that as like a, an insured piece of art. It's well, an insured traffic box that you painted on. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so I think that's more the stuff that we need to fill in the gaps on. Well, I have a couple of friends who've been here forever and been involved with variations of this forever and said they'd be happy to drive around, <laughs> you know, get get involved with looking at this so i i don't quite know how to well all, all you need is that spreadsheet you can just print it out and they can go around with you with under your yeah select well, a few and start going up to them and making sure that the, the artist is properly credited that the where it is located um yeah i could well do that so so all those different pieces are all now in one place Yes, I'll go ahead and um, add that here to the chat, but right. um, and I'll also send it by email. Excellent. Okay, excellent. All right. I think that pretty much covers public art, unless somebody else has any questions or comments. All right, let's go That's ahead and fabulous. move on to grants. Um, Essence is not here. Do you want to start, Holly, and I fill in, or the other way around? I can start, and you can um, go ahead. Start. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Uh, so um, the fall grant cycle is now live. We are um, accepting applications for 
three categories this round as opposed to two. So we've added emerging artist category for this uh, cycle. Uh, we've gotten a few final applications in, uh, not too many at this point. Um, I'm not sure how typical that is. So early That's in the not cycle. typical at all. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. And they're they're all project grants. None. Uh, I haven't seen any yet for operations or emerging artists. So hopefully um, those will get up there. Uh, I feel like we had a pretty successful um, grants uh, workshop kickoff session last Wednesday night. Thanks to all of you who were there who helped support and uh, share information. Uh, that was great. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I think Have you gotten any requests for office hours? That was, yeah. Okay. So far, I've only gotten one request for office hours. And Brandy, I actually think I'm going to pair them with you, but it's not until much later, till next week, that this will happen. Um, I would encourage those of you who are on the grant subcommittee, um, if you haven't already, to send me some hours that you would be available for any requests for meeting during the dates of October 18th, 19th. 20th, 21st, and 22nd, just so if we do get more requests from the public to meet with commissioners to ask questions about their grants, that we can pair them with someone who can give them a little background based on your experience of going through the review process in the past. And I would say, Holly, even if somebody reaches out to you afterwards, mm -hmm. after those dates, don't, don't feel like, okay, well, you know, you didn't come out to us <laughs> in time, that week is over, out the door. Uh, reach out to us if you have somebody with questions. I'm sure okay. somebody can make Great. it happen. Thank you. Um, uh, as far as readers go, uh, the BUEA is in the process of um, making their suggestion of who will join us on November 13th uh, to do our review. Um, so um, as soon as the grants close on October 29th, I will work with Helen to begin allocating who will be reading what grants, get all that information out to you. Um, one thing we haven't done yet, um, but um, perhaps it would be best to do this uh, to a Google poll specifically to those who are on the art subcommittee to just decide what time we're going to commit to all getting together during the day of November 13th. So. All right, do you want to do that? Or do you want me to do that? I can do it. Totally fine. Sounds good. Let's just Great. get it done. Perfect. <laughs> that way we can keep moving on. Yeah. Any questions regarding grants or anything else that you want to add anybody? All right, well, Hopefully, um, we'll have more updates after our next subcommittee meeting. But in the meantime, I have nothing else to add. And let's look at the agenda here real quick. I lost it. Too, too many uh, spreadsheets. Um, OK, the website needs some verbiage updating, and I shared this with all of you a couple of times and I just want to see if anybody has any comments, any changes, or if you're good for me to release this to the IT department at the city and have it all updated. I have no clue if you've read them or not. <laughs> Babette, I can't hear you. You, you sent out the, uh, not recently, you sent it out. I sent it in my midpoint email uh, last time and. Last time, yes, I read it, okay. Yeah, um, it's fine. So, okay. Anybody so, have any, of, Karen, go ahead. Yeah, it, uh, I, I looked at it and it looks like there's still parts that are unfinished. Yes. And, and it, that hasn't changed, I mean, over the course of a month or so. So what's the status there? I don't think I'm going to get those updates. I'm going to have to make them myself. So I will go ahead and update that um, instead of having other commissioners work on that. And as soon as that is done, um, my hope is that by the midpoint email, I will have everything finalized. And if anybody has any questions at that point, please let me know. And, and so what good. is the process that goes to the city, a, a webmaster or something like that, and then they do their magic or? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, all we can change is verbiage. We cannot change the format, the columns, the any of that. So it's just updating what 
we're saying in the homepage for the grants and for the BAC to reflect the latest work that we've done on the strategic plan and the public art master plan and the restructuring of grants. Um, just basically getting up to date and updating commissioners and things like that. So this, this is probably not going to have images or anything like that with it. It's just all text. Yeah, unfortunately, that is the limitation of the capabilities, as I was told. Nick, did you want to add something? Uh, I was just going to say, I, uh, I did not realize that I never got back to on the website thing. I, my, my intention was just to pull some quick text from the master plan, which is easy. I, like, I'm, I'm seeing a couple, like, 1% and um, public art things there. Um, that's, that's really simple. I can get that to you this week. Okay, awesome. All right. Let's see. What else do we have? All right. Commissioner updates. We have so many updates. But let's start with the very good news that we have. Rachel join us. Rachel Kawakala, who um, actually did grants review earlier in the year. So she dipped her toes and I've been courting her for a year, year and a half. So Rachel, why don't you take a minute to kind of introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background. Yeah, thanks, Brandy. I'm really grateful to be with you all. And um, I have to give a shout out to Essence and Brian, both who were really wonderful um, with the, the grant cycle um, experience. I am, I feel like I'm new-ish to Bloomington. I moved here in 2019 to begin my PhD in art history. The last 18 months have been a little bit of a blur, so I'm not so new anymore. Um, but I, prior to that, I worked in museums, and prior to that, I was a an art and French teacher um, at a high school in Mississippi. So I've bounced around a little bit, but I'm very excited to be working with you all, and excited to be um, involved with the with arts in Bloomington. And uh, Rachel's semester is a little bit crowded right now, so she's going to be joining a subcommittee come January. And also that will also give her a chance to kind of get a sense of what the two subcommittees are all about and which one she would like to join, if not both. I don't know. She might surprise us. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Rachel? Okay. Well, I was hoping some... Uh, oh, Sam. Sam, say hi. Hey. Hi, Sam. Just in time. Hello. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm on dad duty. Um, yeah, no worries. Right Can you give us an update real quick of what's going on with you? Yeah. Oh, Mara needs a wrench uh, here. Um, well, I have news. We're moving away uh, to Madison, Wisconsin. So I'm, I'll be leaving the commission. So I guess my last meeting. Yeah. So we're all... Sorry if, yeah, Rachel and Sean and me are all out of here now. No yeah, worries, we'll be, Sam. We'll be heading we out. Been, you sorry, all the best. I've been packing all day long and, uh, yeah, just kind of forgot. We leave tomorrow or Friday. We leave Friday. So, yeah, so when, when Sam decides that. things, he decides them and he takes charge right away. <laughs> I've learned that. Yeah, I mean, we, I let you know a while ago. We, we around September, we figured it out, uh, early September. Yeah, uh, lots of family up there. It'll be good. Some people move six or 12 months after they decide. So you're moving quickly. No worries. Uh, yeah. Any words for Sam from other commissioners? Yeah, I just hope you'll come back when we get that map and lead the bike tour of all the murals. I wish you the sure. best of luck. It's a great Thank place. You. Thanks, yeah, we're excited. Well, Sam, I know your attention is fairly distracted right now and I understand perfectly, I've been in your place, but I do wanna say thank you. Thank you for your ideas. Thank you for your ongoing participation, your optimism, your taking notes, everything that you brought to the commission only made it better. And I really, really appreciate being part of it with you. 
So thanks, best Bernie. Of luck. Thank you. Good. Yeah. I always uh, I didn't know if I ever contributed enough. I didn't. I felt always a little not like I contributed that much, but um, I hope I did. So thank you. No, you absolutely did. Never doubt yourself. All right. In other news, um, Essence will be leaving the commission as well. So she will see this grant cycle wrap up and then that will be the end of her participation with the commission. Uh, so if anybody wants to consider uh, furthering their participation in the grant subcommittee, please reach out and let me know. Otherwise I will be looking at you know who else we can recruit and how we can restructure the commission moving forward a little bit because there will be some gaps. Um, as you all know, Sam was the one taking our notes. He was our secretary. We no longer have a secretary. We no longer have a <laughs> grants committee chair. So not to worry anybody, of course, but it's just things that we need to consider moving forward. And before I start reaching out to people, if anybody wants to reach out to me, please let me know. I will be meeting with Holly next week to kind of reassess and figure out what steps we need to take in order to get these vacancies filled sooner rather than later. The last time around, it took a very long time to get some vacancies taken care of. And I don't think we want to do that this time. I want to apply some pressure into city council and anybody who needs to approve these and also be proactive in reaching out to other members of the community who we think uh, would benefit themselves or help us out by joining the commission. So those are my commissioner updates. Um, I believe we had some chat about the implementation, but overall, I think if I'm not, correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think we've covered anything that has to do with that based on our public art and grants in website. Um, touch points. The only other thing would be uh, social media, which has fallen off. Essence has been doing other than the last couple of weeks where I took it up, up for her. If anybody else wants to be an active participant on our Instagram account or on Facebook, please again, let me know. We all have the logging information. Otherwise I will continue to do that and keep reposting like the production of the urban fabric and things like that into our story so that we're a little bit more active. I did notice that several members of our community were um, highlighting all of the information we had for the grants. So that was the first time we kind of had a big push on social media or a voice on social media regarding one of our programs. So that was good. Holly, you seem like you wanted to say something. <laughs> No, I'm just, yeah, I will continue also to do a little more pushing on the BAC's Facebook page just to. Okay, perfect. Yeah, with some Does anybody have, <laughs> Nick, go ahead. I just had a quick question. So uh, with um, Sam's and Essence's departure, we'll have three commissioner vacancies. Is that right? Oh, you're muted. Yep. Yes, I believe so. Okay, cool. All right, I think we're very near our, the end here. All right, any commissioner announcements? This, uh, Rachel, this is a moment where you share any projects that you have going on, anything that you want other members to be aware of. It used to be a very active part of our meetings, but with COVID, it hasn't been very active, unfortunately. And I would like to take a moment to invite those members of the public who have joined us today to say hi, introduce yourselves, and if you have anything that you want to share, please go ahead and do so. Chris, you look, you look ready. You're muted or we can't hear you. No problem. 
one setting or another. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I just hooked up a new soundbar to my computer and I was trying to like, the mic was coming through there. Anyways, um, I had a meeting with Bryony earlier. Um, I just recently moved to Bloomington, but I used to uh, volunteer for the design conference that they run. And she had mentioned that there was some spots open and I was interested in trying to get involved more with things around Bloomington. So this seemed like a really interesting opportunity. So I wanted to pop in and say hi. Um, I might get more involved down the road if I learn more about it, but um, I'm a graphic design faculty at IU, and this is my first semester, so I grew up in Indiana, but I just moved back to Bloomington uh, from Rochester, New York, so it's only been a few months, but it's been great so far, and uh, this seems like an exciting opportunity, so hopefully I'll get to know everybody sooner than later. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah. Jack? Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jack Kowaleski. I am a librarian at the Public Library, and I just started this position a couple months ago, and we're always looking to bring in new partners and kind of expand our programming. And one of the things that I'm really interested in is expanding our arts programming. Um, we've done a couple outdoor concerts recently that have been really successful. Um, I just came to kind of introduce myself and um, put my contact info out there if anyone um, wants to uh, talk about working with the library. Um, we would be happy to, to, to do that. Um, something like a public arts walk would be a great partnership with us. Um, and we could, you know, help market and, and bring our, our clientele to, to your events. So um, I just wanted to say hi and, and I'll, I'll, I'll drop my email in the chat. Thanks. Perfect. That sounds really exciting. And uh, Holly, maybe you can drop in your email. I just dropped mine, Jack, so you can reach out to both of us. Um, Holly is assistant director to the arts for the city and I'm the chair for the commission. And we can further the conversation. Absolutely. Thanks. Chaz. Hi, everybody. Um, for those who don't know me, I like welcome Rachel. Um, Chaz Modinger, I work for FAR Center for Contemporary Arts, which also houses Pictura Gallery. So we're just an art space in town. Um, I always attend these meetings, so you'll see me a lot. Um, I just want to shout out our workshops because we have a really exciting one coming up with Anna Powell Denton. It's on studio lighting and it takes place at her studio. And we also have one, Rose Inia, who is a poet and writer in town, is teaching a writing workshop about how to write about art, um, like photography um, and sculpture, any sort of art painting, how you can like use that to then write, use that in your writing to write poems about or whatever. It's called some crazy name that I can't pronounce, so I won't even try to say what the word is. But that's coming up at, later in October as well. And um, then we'll have an open to the public, free to attend poetry reading. Um, local poets in town, four or five of them, will be reading work they wrote for our contemporary photography show called Velvet Generation, which features three Czech photographers about growing up in like the 90s, early 2000s. So anyway, I'm gearing up a bunch of other workshops. So check out our Eventbrite, or our website and you can see what we have going on. So, and if, as usual, if anybody has any instructors that they know who are looking for spaces to teach art classes, let me know. Thanks everybody, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Hi, I hear you, uh, or I, I don't know, we're, no, uh, sorry, Sam. There, there was another Sam for oh, public sorry. comment. No worries. Oh, thanks. But sorry. They just left, so no problem. Well, I think that's it. But before we all log off, I just want to say thank you to Helen, who continues to support and help us every single month. She does a lot of work behind the scenes that we're not always aware of and we're not always acknowledging. So thank you, Helen, for all of your hard work.
And um, that's it. We're early today. Anything else before we log off? Thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic evening and a good end to your week. Thank you.